now a big and warm welcome to our DLD chairman, the one and only Yossi Vardy, and to a true DLD all-star and good friend, Peter Diamandis. He's the founder and executive chairman of the XPRIZE Foundation. Yossi and Peter, it's great to see you. Hi. Good afternoon. Good to see you, Alicia. <laughs> hi, hi. To the audience. To the audience, as Steffi said, Alicia is the most important lady because in the whole DLD scheme, because she's in charge of revenue. And without our great uh, partners, we cannot offer this wonderful experience to all of you. So Alicia, thank you very much. Thank you, Yossi. I'm blushing. Let me briefly talk to you further about it. Yossi and Peter, I want to give you a good stage here. And um, I wanted to ask you, we are living through some of the most extraordinary times ever experienced in human history. It's actually a time where um, exponential technologies enable us not only to just point out to problems, but rather to solve them. And that's why it's so special that we have you two here today, because you two are not only high tech investors and serial entrepreneurs, but also the two of you are always challenging yourselves, your communities and the status quo. So I'm so keen to learn from you today about the power of mindset and its different shapes and forms. The chat room is yours. Great. Thank you very much, Alicia. It's a great honor and pleasure, more pleasure than honor, but honor enough to host uh, Peter and uh, I I kind of thought how I should define Peter because he has so many dimensions, but I would say he's the, the eternal optimist. The guy is suffering from a disease called optimization or something like this. <laughs> and uh, the problem with Peter that he doesn't count on other people to fulfill his optimistic dreams, but he goes and uh, do, <clears throat> do the work uh, himself. Peter really is one of uh, some of our guests who really ch had an impact and changed the world. He really redefined how science, scientists, explorers, curious people are being motivated and being pushed to put their efforts on directions by establishing the X Prize, which he will, I hope, talk a little bit about. And also he created one of uh, the better think tanks in the United States, in California, maybe the world that this is the Singularity University. And how you say without further ado, which I don't know exactly what does it mean, but I feel it fits. Here we are going to move into the subject matter. As Alicia said, this is the topic is the power of mindset. And Peter is going to share with us his thoughts about mindset or even more more precisely how you change mindset how you harness mindset to create inflection points on four topic exponential mindsets abundance mindset moonshot mindset and longevity mindsets so peter the floor is yours and i will disturb you every now and then peter please <laughs> my pleasure <clears throat> yossi good to see you and uh, always a pleasure to catch a little glimpse of, uh, of Esther Dyson as well, uh, who's uh, brilliant and, and amazing in this planet. Uh, so here's a question I have for everybody. Uh, if you were to look at the most successful people on the planet, however you want to define them, um, from uh, Martin Luther King to a, you know, uh, Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, you know, Steve Jobs, you know, uh, uh, you pick your favorite uh, successful um, individual, what made them successful? Was it the money they had? Was it the technology that they inherited? Uh, or was it their mindset? And I would posit that if you took away everything from the most successful individuals, uh, their money, their relationships, their technology, but you left them their mindset, that they would recreate their success to some level. I think mindset is the most important thing that we have as leaders, as entrepreneurs. Uh, and yet, how many of us actually take the time to say, I want to craft this particular mindset? 
Uh, a lot of times our mindsets are inherited. They're inherited from our parents, from uh, where we live, the people we hang out with, what we happen to read. And I find that a little bit too haphazard. And so I become very uh, focused in in my work and uh, the programs. I run a, a high-end program called Abundance 360 uh, as part of Singularity University. And I become very focused on, okay, let's talk about mindsets. And in fact, let's talk about what mindsets are the most uh, valuable and important to craft during this time. <clears throat> and there are four that I'm focused on particularly. There's six I talk about, but four, and you name them, uh, an exponential mindset, an abundance mindset, a moonshot mindset, and a longevity mindset. And, and Yossi, if you don't mind, I'd love to just touch base on each of those. Sure. Yeah. So, so an exponential mindset is one uh, in which you realize that our minds are linear, our, our brains, 100 billion neurons of our brain, 100 trillion synaptic connections evolved in the savannas of Africa 100,000 years ago when the world was local and linear. And so we're wired in a local and linear fashion. But the world around us, the technology world that that you have helped to create and invest and DLD speaks about uh, is growing uh, exponentially and is global from its, its you know, uh, every element of it. And so an exponential mindset, you realize if you, if you double something 10 times, it's a thousand times better. Double it 20 times, it's a million times. Double it 30 times, it's a billion fold. And it's a realization that we project linearly but the world around us is growing exponentially. And when you, when you can embrace that mindset, uh, you realize that the tools we have to solve the world's biggest problems are growing at an extraordinary rate. And that, um, that when you're building a solution, when you're building a company, uh, you, can't, you can't build it based upon the technology that exists today. You have to build it based upon the technology that you're going to be intercepting in two or three or four years. You have to skate to where the puck is going to be, so to speak. So, and there's no way to, uh, to rewire your brain exponentially. All you can do is update on a constant basis every month, every week, every year. This is now possible. This is now possible. This is now possible. So that's what I, what I teach, what I write about. Um, a, uh, an abundance mindset, I think, is equally important. So we've come out of an era, the last century of scarcity, uh, or out of millennia of scarcity, where there was never enough food, water, energy, uh, education, health care. You know, we used to go and kill whales on the ocean to get whale oil to light the nights. And then we ravaged mountainsides uh, to get coal. And then we drilled kilometers under the ocean floor to get oil. But now we realize we live in a planet that is bathed in 8,000 times more energy uh, from the sun than we get, you know, than we use as a species in a year. And the poorest countries in the world are the sunniest countries in the world. And this is true in almost every area. And so every year I focus on how, how, can, help, how can I help people see that the world is getting more and more abundant? You know, even during 2020, during this period of this global pandemic, we had more capital available flowing in than ever before, right? So in, a, in, a, in an abundance mindset, you realize that there are more opportunities next year than there were this year. It changes, it flips your mindset, right? Scarcity mindset, if we have a pie and more people come, come in, we have to slice the pie thinner and thinner slices. An abundance mindset, you say, bullshit, I'm going to bake more pies, right? And so this is the world we're living in where we're able to bake more pies in, in almost every area. Um, not every area, but almost every area. And, and that mindset of abundance leads to more collaboration, more, uh, more, uh, more positive elements in, in the world. Uh, very briefly, a, a moonshot mindset is a realization that every one of us today um, are at, 
able to do things that only governments could do 20 or 30 years ago. We have access to more computational power, more capital, more data um, than ever before. And and it's it's the realization that you're in a position now to go after a moonshot, which, uh, you know, Astro Teller from Google X really popularized the term, he and Sebastian Thrun and Larry Page, uh, where in a moonshot, you're going tenfold bigger than the rest of the world, where the rest of the world is going 10% bigger. So most of us in our businesses are happy with a 10% increase, 10% greater revenue, 10% more product sold, 10% price reduction, whatever the case might be. But in a moonshot mindset, you're not saying 10%, you're saying 1,000%. You're going tenfold bigger. Um, and to to think about a moonshot mindset really requires saying, I'm going to start with a clean sheet of paper. Uh, I'm not going to try and take the existing system and and get a thousandfold better using, you know, you can you can work nights and weekends and you can you can fine tune a system to get 10% better. But when you say you want to go a thousand percent better, tenfold better, um, this requires a brand new, you know, clean sheet uh, thinking. And then the final mindset, which I'm very passionate about, I spend a lot of my uh, my venture fund investment in my time, my next book is on it, is a longevity mindset. And it's the realization that, you know, our bodies uh, evolved on the savannas of Africa a thousand years ago, I mean, a hundred thousand years ago. And the average lifespan back then was, you know, mid to late twenties. Uh, you would have a baby at age 13, um, that baby would grow up when it turned 13 and you're now 26, your baby was having a baby. And back before we had abundance of food from McDonald's or Whole Foods or your favorite place, uh, the last thing you wanted to do was take food out of the mouths of your grandchildren if you wanted to perpetuate the species. And so you would die. There was no evolutionary advantage for you living longer before there was, you know, the written language and so forth. Consequently, uh, we have had a uh, average life expectancy 100 years ago of just, you know, uh, mid 40s. We're now up to our late 70s. And this decade, we're going to see incredible technologies from stem cells, wind pathway manipulations, um, a whole slew of different technologies from amazing scientists like uh, David Sinclair and George Church that have the potential to not only slow aging, stop aging, but a lot of conversation about reversing aging. And I think uh, mindset is an important part of that because when you have a longevity mindset, you are looking uh, for those technologies. So I'll pause there. I heard you are going to offer an X prize to the first scientist which will be able to take a 70 years old man and uh, and put him back into the womb. Is it true? <laughs> I can say that we are working on an age reversal X prize that I'm excited about. Can you uh, tell our audience <laughs> a little bit about the X prize and some of the accomplishment which you affected so far? Sure, sure. So when I grew up uh, passionate about space. It was the Apollo program and Star Trek that got me going. And then I realized my chance of becoming a NASA astronaut were one in a thousand. And even if I was, I'd get a chance to go maybe once or twice in my career, <clears throat> which was not my vision. So I was given a copy of The Spirit of St. Louis one day by a dear friend, Greg Marinak. And I read that Lindbergh in 1927 flew from New York to Paris, not on a whim, but to win a $25,000 prize. And I said, that's amazing. So I started studying prizes and found out that these incentive prizes, not like the Nobel Prize that you look back 10, 20 years and you award something already done. An incentive prize is you say, I don't care where you went to school, what you've ever done. If you solve this problem, you win. And uh, so I ended up coming up with something uh, which was eventually funded by the Ansari family. We named it the $10 million Ansari X Prize in their honor. And, and it was a prize uh, offering $10 million for the first team who could build a private spaceship to carry three adults into space privately, land, and within two weeks make the trip again. 
And we launched the prize in May of 96. It was won in October 2004 by Burt Rutan. Um, and then Richard Branson came and bought the rights to create Virgin Galactic. And since then, we've launched uh, now $300 million in prizes. About uh, about three weeks ago, I was uh, successful. Richard, back me now. I was uh, successful in in convincing Elon to fund a hundred million dollar carbon removal X prize. So uh, we have a uh, a carbon, you know, a hundred million dollar prize. Uh, the details will be announced on Earth Day, April twenty second. Uh, Elon has put up uh, the capital, um, and it's for removing CO two from the atmosphere at gigaton scale. Um, but we have a prize also uh, funded out of uh, out of Abu Dhabi and by Tony Robbins uh, for called Feeding the Next Billion. And this is for stem cell grown and plant grown fish and chicken equivalents. In other words, how do we bring down the price, make, make these uh, protein sources healthier, cheaper, more abundant, better for the environment. Um, and we are working on a whole slew of prizes. We've just uh, uh, launched a, a Rainforest X Prize, uh, where uh, the teams are are being asked to basically catalog all of the life forms in a hundred hectares of uh, of rainforest, so that you can start to value a rainforest by virtue of the diversity of life versus what you get for clear cutting it or planting. Yeah. What? <clears throat> Personal question: What was the source of this huge, gigantic curiosity that you have? You know, you are always on on a, on a crusade to go and crack. No, really, some some other some other issue. Uh, I, I listen. I I think of myself as a realist, not an optimist, but. The realism, uh, Yossi, my dear friend, comes from <clears throat> the belief that there is no problem we can't solve. It's no, a matter it's, of it's it's you you sucked it uh, at home. Where did you got the? It's really you know curiosity is so important. How you? I think it's space. I think it was it was Star Trek. It was Apollo. It was Apollo. Yeah, Apollo and Star Trek. And I really believe in my heart of hearts that. There is no problem we can't solve. It's a matter of bringing the right minds and capital and technology together. So when I see a problem, I say, okay, how are we going to solve that? So one of my favorite problems living in California right now is these damn wildfires we have. So I'm working on a wildfire X prize, which says, okay, just like cancer, you want to you want to find cancer at stage zero at the very beginning and zap it, right? Wildfires, the same thing. I think it's possible to detect a wildfire at the moment of inception and then put it out immediately. It's so imagine. Yeah. yeah. We, we had a big hackathon in Israel like two months ago about exactly this issue because we had a very tragic <clears throat> wildfire in the Carmel Mountains. By the way, I have to share with you how we define the, what is a, a optimist and pessimist in Israel. What's that? So you know that the, the pessimists see the half glass empty, the optimists see the half glass full, and the realists, you say that you are the realists. The realists take the glass and run away. <laughs> ah, I'm the person who sees the glass overflowing. And it's, you know, we're living in a time where, I mean, we forget you know how incredible this technology is we forget that on this technology are millions and millions of, of dollars worth of of free stuff probably tens of millions of dollars of free stuff compared to 20 years ago we forget there's more capital we're living longer and we're able to do much more with our time right i want, I want to ask you a tough question you know, okay what, what you say is true but Esther very rightly pointed that all these goodies are not equally distributed. You know, you and me and the people who are attending this conference have the time and the means and the mind and the education and the background and the curiosity to enjoy it. What about the bottom half? So that's do they, do great. Do they benefit from all these things? Great question. 
So first of all, we, we tend to forget what life used to be like. We tend to romanticize the past and forget what life used to be like. We're living on a planet today where there are more of these devices than there are humans. And some of the poorest kids on the planet have access to these. So first of all, we're wiring the planet with bandwidth, right? Between 5G, Starlink, which is over a thousand satellites, will be at 12,000 or 14,000 or 30,000. And then there are other satellite constellations going up you know, these devices are getting cheaper and cheaper. And there's a point at which, you know, Google or Amazon or Facebook will give them away for free. Because if you don't have something, I can't sell anything to you. And so I think, you know, these devices will become also become the means by which anyone can earn a living. Uh, we're going to see the cost of education effectively become uh, available. And ultimately, the cost of healthcare, uh, you know, continue to to diminish. Uh, listen, it's not equally distributed, uh, and but it can be. And we are, if you look at the numbers, the number of people connected on the planet uh, is growing and continues to grow exponentially. But um, again, uh, I'm the I'm the optimist here. The more connected we are, the more peaceful the planet is. Now, and that's... The, last, the last question, what do you think the fact that Alicia appeared on the screen means? I think she has an opinion about all of this and she wants to share it. I actually wrote down... Peter, them. Thank you very much. It was like always very, very interesting. And uh, I hope to see you soon, you know, and maybe face to face, not anymore through the glass. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, my dear and friend. Yossi, maybe we can continue that conversation at the DLD Tel Aviv. Like we have so many people from all over the world tuned in. I think we should announce maybe the date for this year where we hopefully can connect in person or virtual. Yeah. Do you want to? 14, 14 of October, come to beautiful Tel Aviv where the weather is always shining and where you have more Bauhaus buildings existing than in any other place on earth. Perfect. And Peter, we still remember your visit and your help to to kick to kick uh, the 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 satellite, you know, which went to the moon. Thank you. So much, Onwards. Guys. Bye Thank now. Thank you. Thank you so much.